Take your rug fabrication and we're going to show you how to build a four point roll bar for a car. I have a piece of sample bent just inch and a half DOM tubing here. It's bent to about a 90. The important thing here is just that it's the right radius. We're going to use this to do test fitment. So I'm going to set this up near the headliner here. Looks like 14 and a half. So we're going to do 29 inches of straight tubing across the top of the car. From the body to the body I've got 53 inches. Now these two corners up here we're going to bend once at the headliner and then once down here at the shoulder. Those are going to total 90 degrees. To determine that angle, I'm just going to use an angle cube. Super easy way. It's like a protractor basically. So we're going to zero it horizontal and then we're going to measure an angle that's parallel to our, our B pillar that's in the car here already. And now I'm getting 60, 63 degrees. I'm going to make 65. That's a nice round number. We'll also need the overall height of our cage. We would be at 44 inches. The two most common ways to attach a roll cage to the bottom of the car is with plates or boxes. Both methods allow for good access for welding and your rule book will define which one you have to use or give you a choice between the two. The plates is the method we're using on this car, so we're going to design the cage to come all the way down to the floor of the car and then if we needed to weld the top we'd be cutting holes, sliding the cage through the floor, welding the top of the cage up wherever we needed to, and then we lift it back up, slide our plates in, and we can weld those plates to the cage and then bolt them or weld them to the car. The other method is to use boxes. You design the, basically the same cage, but three inches short, so you've got access to weld it while it's in the vehicle. And then you lift it up to the point it's supposed to be at, and then you build boxes to fill that height. And those boxes are welded securely to the chassis along the sides, bottom, wherever else you need to, and your rule book will define those things. So we transferred all of our dimensions. We measured in the car onto this sheet of paper. I offset by an inch and a quarter to give us room to have that tube come down without going through the trim on our car. And then I went over the 14 and a half, traced in our bend, went down at 65 degrees like we measured, and I found this intersection point. I also calculated the length on both these bends. Per the sticker on the side of an M600 tubing bender, you have 0 0.078 inches of tubing for every degree you bend on a four and a half inch bend radius. So I just did 25 times 0 0.078, that gives us just under two inches. 65 times 0 0.078, that gives us just over five inches. We'll use these numbers a little bit later, but for now I just went up half that distance, an inch here, and that allowed me to just directly measure how much tubing is between our bends, how much straight tubing, and I got 13 and a half inches. So I also calculated, like I said, five inches for the length on bend number one. So when we lay this tubing out after we cut it, we're going to use those numbers to put all the lines on the tubing where we're going to make our bends. It's going to make it a snap to produce this design. The other thing we can get from this drawing is our cut length. If we just ignore the length of the bends and all that, we can extend these lines straight till they intersect, and you can just measure all the straight lengths. We got 17 up top, 18 and a half here, and 26 for the leg that goes down to the bottom of the car. And all you do is add those up, multiply it by two, which in this case is 123 inches. And that's going to be a little bit longer than if we actually measured all the lengths of the bends and everything. And this is a more conservative approach because it's going to make the tubing a little bit too long. It's annoying to try and make the tubing longer after you've bent it. So we're just going to trim it to fit once we're done. It's going to cost us a couple inches of tubing, which is probably about a dollar. So it'll be just fine. We have transferred our measurements from the drawing we did on the wall to our actual physical tubing. We've got marked here the center line of the tubing, abbreviated CL, and then down 14 and a half inches just like the drawing. I've got our first bend labeled. I labeled it B1 and then I just drew a crosshatch pattern to the end of the bend. As you saw before, we calculated this to be 5.07 inches and then from the end of that bend we went over another 13 and a half inches just like we drew to where bend 2 starts. I labeled it B2 and then I drew again that same crosshatch pattern. The Rogue Fab Bender has an offset of five and a quarter inches on the M600 for any bend on a four and a half inch bend radius. So the clamp block is always going to be five and a quarter inches from the start of the bend. So in the machine, that's the way the dies are oriented. So you can always see the bend starts here directly under the center hole of the die and the clamp block's always going to be in that same place relative to it. So further over here, we have the same thing again, clamp block and the start of the bend. So this is clamp block location one. This is going to be our 65 degree bend and we're going to accommodate for spring back on this bend. Every time you bend tubing, like anything else made of metal, it's going to rebound slightly from wherever you bend it. So 
Thankfully, with a tubing bender, we can measure that easily and then compensate by that amount we measured. So 65 degree bend, we're gonna to bend to 65 degrees first, then check spring back. That's exactly 65. The material's stuck in the machine right now, so we're gonna back off the hydraulics. Now it's loose, and we're going to advance just until it's about to start bending again. That's the actual net angle we achieved. Now this pin's tight. We are at 61 degrees, so we have four degrees of spring back. 61 minus, or 65 minus 61. So we're going to overbend up to 69. That's 69 degrees, and that completes bend number one. When we tighten up for bend number two, we're going to make sure this angle cube's reading zero. That's going to mean there's no rotation between the bends. So we have a tubing in the machine with the clamp set on C2 for clamp two. So I wrote a note on here to remind me it's a 25 degree bend. We'll again be accounting for spring back. We know there's going to be less than there was at 65 degrees, so I'm just going to start with three degrees of spring back compensation, which would be a 28 degree gross bend. And we got about 25 and a half. So that's a good approximation, and of course close enough for this kind of work. So we'll do the exact same bends on the other side. We're gonna show those to you sped up, and then we'll go on to notching and assembling this roll bar. We just cut our crossbar, it goes from top corner down to the bottom corner here. And I just drew a plus sign on the tubing, measured the tape measure. It came out to 57 inches in this application. And now's a good time to address um, the overall design of these, placement of the weld joints and height for bars and things like that is all determined by the rule book that your sanctioning body adheres to. So that could be NHRA, SCCA, circle track, whatever kind of racing you're doing, the layout and design of your roll bar in terms of the way it's gonna be inspected and how to keep it safe, that is going to be in the rule book. So don't just build your roll bar the way we're building ours. This might not work for your racing application. And the last thing we want you to do is be unsafe. So we're gonna gather the angle here on this bar. It is 46.7 degrees. For simplicity, we're going to give up that degree and a half and go with 45. Because it's going to turn out just fine if we do. We have our notcher set to 45 degrees here. As usual, when you notch deeper than an inch and a half with an inch and a half depth hole saw, a little chunk of the tubing gets stuck. So we will knock that out with a grinder. And then we can finish up our notch.
Now it's time to build our harness bar. That's going to be a horizontal component that goes in roughly like this. We will be cutting this in the middle at 45 degrees and then notching both ends of it so that it joins in nice and flush. And then each end will have a 90 degree notch where it joins into the vertical component of our roll bar. So now we have our harness bar complete. It's of course in two pieces notched at 45 in the middle, 90 at the outside, and it will install roughly like that. Now's the exciting part, we get to actually test fit this roll bar in the car. Oh, that fit is outstanding. That fits perfect without even being cut. So the back tubes are going to come straight off right inside the bend on our roll bar and they'll connect down to the shock towers on the car. So we're going to notch them at 90 degrees. And we will notch the second one. So while our 90 degree notch lines up great with the top tube, it needs to have another cut for our crossbar. So we're gonna measure the angle between those tubes and how much rotation there is as well. So measuring here, I'm getting 70. So it comes back from the 90, 20 degrees back. And the other thing we need is the amount of rotation. So if I rotate this tube until it's in line with the other one, I'm showing exactly 20 degrees again. So to figure out the orientation of our tube, we're going to line it up with the hole saw. That's going to get it with the same alignment it originally had. And then we'll use a rotation gauge to get that 20 degrees of rotation. Once we have it set to 20 degrees. Now that we got this notch cleaned up for the diagonal bar, the gap's nice and tight, ready to be welded. The next steps for this project, we would put it back in the car, weld on the plates at the four points where it's going to attach to the vehicle, and then it would get welded or bolted to the car. We've now shown you how to do all the bending on a Rogue Fab Model 600 and all the notching on a Rogue Fab Versa notcher. So we hope you've been able to learn something from this video, and we would really appreciate it if you would leave us a comment in the box below and let us know what you thought of the video or what your ideas for content for future videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe and check that box for notifications. That's going to let us tell you when we make new videos and post them to YouTube so you can be the first to see the new content. Thank you very much for watching.